So this will be a short lesson on how orchestration based, based sites are works in microservices. So before now I talked about how choreograph choreography based sites are works in microservices and today we are going to be talking about orchestration. We are going to explain it step by step and in very easy way. So basically this is a big picture of how the microservices works. Uh, in case of uh, we are focusing on, on actual transactions in microservices that have to assess data from different distributed uh, databases, even combination of um, data from different database platforms, maybe NoSQL, maybe SQL. So there are two methods. We have choreography and we have orchestration. We've talked about choreography. You can look at the link in the description box, you'll find explanation on, on how choreography works. So basically, just an overview of what a saga is. A saga is simply a transaction that is distributed distributed across different services. For instance, in this diagram you see here, we have two databases, which actually two services having two different databases. And a saga starts by when an order is placed in the other service. So when the order is placed in the other service, it triggers an event. This event is picked up by the customer service. Maybe the customer service verifies that the customer is uh, able to place the order and then it sends back an event to the other service who comp which now completes the order, all right? So that's basically what happens in a saga. So now we are now talking about orchestration-based uh, saga. So if you have gone through my uh, lesson on choreography-based saga, orchestration-based uh, uh, orchestration saga is about the same thing, but not the same thing, but it's similar. The key difference between the two is that they, 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 they are central orchestrator that handles routing of the event or the requests between the services. So, uh, in a choreograph in a, in, a, in an orchestration based saga the, 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 the services raise events or messages or functions that are assigned not to the other service but to a central orchestrator that gets this event and decides what service to trigger let's now do a step by step in this case of choreography based uh, orchestration based saga to see how exactly it works so in this case, we have the other, other service creates an order in a pending state and then triggers the create order saga, right? So the create order saga sends a reserve credit command to the customer service. So basically, the, 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 clear, the, the clear picture here is that the red section here is what makes the, the creates the whole difference. So when a create other saga starts, a create other event or, or, or message is signed to the create other saga, which is a central orchestrator that uh, manages it. The customer service tries to reserve the credit and finds out that they, they, they are, they are, they are, they are, the customer is not able to place order, is signed back a message to the central orchestrator, which you can see in red in this picture. So at this point, I'm going to go to the details, the step-by-step. -step. Let's now see a schematic picture of exactly what is happening. If you look at this picture, it's similar to the choreography, but let's now go through the 11 steps or the 12 steps to see how exactly it happens. We are going to simulate a failure to show what happens when the, the customer service fails uh, to verify the customer. Just as a reminder, if you are joining me for, me for the first time, hit on the subscribe button because I make lessons every time and uh, you get notified when I make these lessons with you subscribe. So subscribe and then uh, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any challenges understanding the concepts I explain. So the first thing that ever happens in a saga is just an external event trigger the saga. So this external event may be a form field somewhere through the browser or something that triggers the server in the other service, all right? And that's what we call the MS1. So DB1, the database in the, in the MS1, saves the time when this um, event is triggered in this MS1. So uh, the timestamp at that point is T1 because we are trying to calculate the time between when the saga starts and when it, when it stops. And that, in that way, we know, we know the performance in terms of the response time. So once MS1 completes updating C1 by updating the state attributes, 
I think I should be writing it so that it becomes clear. So in the initial state of the of this uh, of the of the database, we have the initial state is S1 and the initial state here is T1. So when MS1 triggers an event and changes this, T1 now uh, S1 now changes to S2. All right, it changes to S2. After it changes to S2 successfully, then it triggers MS1 state change success, meaning that the, the, the execution of this operation was successfully done and the state of the collection is changed from S1 to S2. That time we have we still have T1. This success event is routed to the central orchestrator, which you can see in this diagram. This is a central orchestrator that manages the orchestration. So the orchestrator now posts a message to Q2. Now Q2 is a queue that is listened to by MS2. So when the Q2 is posted or Q2 receives this message, MS2 extracts this message and executes a logic that says change state to S2 on C2. So when the message comes here, okay, straight up places a message and MS2 takes that message and tries to execute a state change here from S1 to S2. All right. The operation fails because we are trying to see how a saga works. This operation fails. Remember that in MS1 it was changed successfully, but in case of this, it uh, the operation fails. So we actually what happens at this point is that MS2 performs a rollback to send back uh, the state of C2 back to S1, right? State one, how it was before. The rollback successfully is successfully done. Now MS2 now posts a message, MS2 uh, state change failure to Q2 via the orchestrator. So it sends a message to the central orchestrator saying that I couldn't perform this action. The orchestrator finds this message in the Q2 queue uh, and then takes this message and informs uh, S1, informs Q1 that there is something that has gone wrong. So. The message that is posted in the Q1 queue by the central orchestrator is now change back your state to S1, which is this message. So this message comes to the Q1 queue and then is picked up by the the, the, the MS1. At this point, the, change, the, the state is changed back to S2. Alright? So at this point, the saga completes successfully and at this point, we take the time uh, T2 and we can now say T2 minus T1, all right? So this is how orchestration-based saga works. Now, if you want this presentation, you can actually request it by leaving me a comment in the comment box below this lesson. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Uh, this is us actually the same steps I actually went through. So if you want, you can pause the video, copy them out, or draw the diagram as well after you pause the video and try to understand exactly how it works. I'd like to thank you very much for viewing. I'd also like to welcome if you can subscribe to my channel, uh, leave me a comment, like the video and share it around if it has been informative for you. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and we'll see you in the next lesson.